So you have another ministry we can monetize? Yes, sir, I do. I was thinking we monetize friendship and wisdom. I'm not sure I'm familiar with either of those. Well, okay then, let me explain. Three hours later. Oh, so you mean like speaking the truth to each other in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also like pointing people to Jesus and the Bible for healing and change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this already, so tell me more. Well, you see, for a long time now, it's been the job of a church pastor or elder to help people with their problems. <laughs> but we both know that's not very fun, so... Most people would rather farm that job out to other professionals. Yeah, taking the time to get to know people in your congregation and give them biblical counsel is way too much work. Exactly, sir. The beauty of it is that people will always have problems. They'll have problems with their marriages and addictions and other sins, so there will always be a business opportunity awaiting. All we have to do is figure out how to exploit people's desperation and brokenness. A lot of money's awaiting for you. Sir? Sorry, I zoned out for a second there. People do seem willing to pay good money when they're desperate and hurting, don't they? Yes, sir, they do. And we'll call it biblical counseling or Christian counseling or something like that. Although I guess it's going to be tough to convince people that it's okay for Christians to be putting a price on friendship and wise advice. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? You mean we keep people from thinking about the implications? No, I mean, come on. Surely you know what this means. Um, don't even think about challenging the Chicago Bulls? Not even close. Don't mess with Texas? Oh, boy. Don't be as stubborn as an ox? <sighs> I spent like 20 bucks on this shirt. I don't even remember now why you showed me this in the first place. <sighs> well, you said it was probably going to be tough to convince people that it's okay for Christians to put a price on biblical counsel, and I said it was actually going to be super easy. We just have to remind people that the good book says, don't muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain. Yeah, I know, I was just messing with you. <sighs> now, I like what you're saying, but... I still don't think people will fall for this idea. I mean, biblical counseling has been something Christians have provided for free for like... 2,000 years? Well, we can slowly phase out the normal expectation by convincing people little by little that only people who have specialized training can help others with their spiritual and emotional problems. Yeah, but who's going to believe that? Doesn't everyone know that the people who are already in your life, who already know and are immersed in the Bible, are the best people to give you counsel? No, actually, most people think that someone who has never met you before and is only taking the time to listen to you because you're giving them money, that person is the best person to give you counsel. Amazing. You know, I once asked my mom, how do I know if someone is a sincere, trustworthy, truthful friend? What did she say? She thought about it for a while. And then she said, son, you'll know it when they send you an invoice after every conversation. Was your mother on some kind of, you know, herbal substance at the time? You mean like herbal tea? Yeah, no, she hated that stuff. No, I mean like, you know, Puff the Magic Dragon? Nah, she hated that song. It would have spoiled the good time she was having eating brownies. So... Okay, but have you ever thought that charging money for biblical counsel will massively compromise the entire thing? How so? I mean, it's pretty simple. The counselor will be tempted to draw out the case so that the person keeps coming back as many times as possible because the longer it takes the person to find healing, the more money the counselor will make. <laughs> That'll never happen. And how do you know? Because my mama also told me, son, the good book says that all those who claim to be Christians are perfect and can never be tempted by anything. Was your mother eating brownies when she said that? Hmm, come to think of it, she was. But how on earth could you have known to ask that? Okay, look, let me put it this way. If you charge people money, the person being counseled will always be wondering, does this person actually have my best interests in mind? Or are they just dragging this thing out to get more money? Dang it. I never thought of it that way. Whoops. Whoopsie. So are you saying we shouldn't do this after all? Nah, it'll probably be fine. We'll just incessantly repeat the idea that people won't value what they don't pay for until everyone believes it. That is one of my favorite verses. And we could even make people feel bad for the counselors by pointing out that they might starve to death if they don't charge to exhort and encourage people with God's word. Even worse, they might not be able to pay off their school loans. Yeah, it's not like we could expect these people to be supported by the free generosity of God's people so that they can do ministry without compromising sincerity. But all this 
leaves me wondering, how will the poor get counsel? Well, it's a well-known fact that the Bible shows no interest in helping the poor. That's why we're going to call it biblical counseling. Did your mother tell you that while she was eating brownies? Hey everyone, if that video made you curious, confused, or even offended you, you're not alone. So let me point you to some free resources that will help you dig deeper into these issues. Links down below. First, head on over to the DorianPrinciple.org and read or listen to the book, which is thoroughly biblical in its response to the commercialization of Christianity. Second, check out the website, copy.church, where you'll learn even more about these same issues, but from a different angle. And finally, don't miss Selling Jesus, which complements this channel. There you'll find a whole lot more to read and learn. And hey, if this video upset you, that's okay. But before you leave a comment, please consider thoroughly investigating the deep biblical and historical rationale behind everything on this channel. I think you'll be surprised. Thanks so much for watching. And I hope some of you will consider taking part in abolishing the Jesus trade and freely giving what we have freely received.